to Friday Night Lights on Fox 12 Oregon, presented by Pacific Office Automation. Well, remember when it rained on week one? Kind of seemed like a bad omen, but now short sleeves required at kickoff for those week six under those Friday night lights. I drove back from my game with the window down, in fact. Bone dry, too hot for a tie here on Fox 12. What a finish here. FNL and the PIL. Grant would love to play their home games in the bowl again, but their home away from home at Marshall Campus has proved to be a winner on the field. Third straight game at home with a big one. Federal 2 1 PIL record to the boys from Franklin. Start of the third quarter. Flankens up 16 7. Grant on offense. Tables turn, though. Ball off the hands of the receiver into Cash Landau, but he's going to fumble. But then Ethan Amon there to recover it. Generals now with the ball again on their own side of the field. Josiah Heintzman, man of the night. This one, an INT for the Lightning, and Josiah nearly goes all the way out down to the one. Knock on the door, two plays later, look who's get in. Wipe those feet, Will Reed, with 22 7, Franklin. But Northeast kids ain't gonna quit. That's Kamari Owens untouched as 22 14 short score. Later, third, Generals and Owens once more. Far side of the field gone into the abyss of the night. 45 yards, tack on two. It's tied at 22. Fourth quarter, more wild stuff. Grant on the ball, Franklin on the 38. The ball in the air, and look who's there. It's Heinzman, the interception on the 19. That takeaway would turn into points. Reed, Amon, getting it on, and a 13-yard pitch and catch. 29-22, Lightning. 18 seconds to go. Graham on the 35, a connection. Braden Baker, Aiden Wood, arms wide open from 35. 29-28, kick it or try to win it. Alex Milson, a winner. They go, they get it. Owens on the carry. Insanity, finish of the year so far. Grant wins. 30 to 29. Lightning next plug in with the demos. The Generals at Cleveland as the PIL moves to Thursday nights next week. Wow, take a breath. Homecoming from Lincoln. The Cardinals' first home game on that new turf in a month. Welcome to co league leaders from Roosevelt in the first of four in a row at their new nest. Rough Riders spoiling the party, though. They're up 28 3 in the third. The boys of St. John's force a fumble. You can always bet on Dontrell Betts looking like his old head coach Ryan McCants back in his day as a Beaver at Reeser. 40-yard run. Then on the goal line, Betts territory two, plowing through 35 to 3. Lincoln, though, would have something to smile about here. Liam Eldridge nearly ripped, but this is gonna be tipped into the grips of Blake Timothy, the 10th grader. 45-yard score. They're only one of the night. 41 to 10 for the Velt. While Lincoln next goes to Wells, Provelt will next go to McDaniel before the Guardians go to St. John's for a potential league title tilt. FNL in Hillsdale. Felt like a good night to reopen that Wells pool, but they drained it already. Jefferson in Southwest, senior night for the 4-1 Guardians. Total ball control for Keith Bennett's kids. Run, 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 and run some more. Green on white into the night, always good. You know Spencer Reed knows how to feed. Hudson Jones, a 45-yarder there. Reed then for keeps in himself. The QB TD in the early edge. You know, Jefferson's quarterback is Brave Johnson, a Babe Ruth World Series champion. Big swing here, but will be picked up and souped off the other way. Beckett, Mercer now. Mercero, ball in tow. Wells hung 46 first half points. 54-32 the final. Well, Jeff remains winless. They've got another try on Thursday at Franklin. Wells will make that quick flight over to Lincoln and close with three straight away games. FNL in the Metro League along Cornell. Two teams, same two records. Three and two Mountainside, three and two Sunset. Both won their Metro League openers a week ago. Keenan Lowe, first year there for the Mavs, signaling, hey man, it's all about the kids. He's joking. First quarter, it was punts, penalties, and a pick. Basically a punt here on third and 18. Kellen Hicks comes up with the interception for the Mavericks. It is homecoming for Sunset. They needed to pick me up, so turn to the hydration specialist on the sidelines. That's J.C. Traw. The water worked. Drew Nice feeds their beast. Justin Cragwell, sophomore sensation, moving very well. 51-yard rush into the purple zone. Lassoed at the 17. They'd then be in the end zone. First blood in the second quarter. Craigwell with the goal line carrying a seven-point lead early. The visitors weren't nervous, though. Alex Ingles, he's their quarterback, and he knows how to get that ball to Jordan Hicks. Sometimes just hand it right off to him. The sophomore tailback gets it all back and makes it level at 7-7. Seven to seven. Final minutes, though, before the half. The silver streaks in the backfield. This would be Andrew Ramtel. Ingles told him, hey, man, go over there. You're going to find your way to be open. And look who's open. 
Yeah, it's Remtel. 21-16, the final to giddy up and out with the win. Mavs now get home with Beaverton, then Jesuit Sunset staring down a run for the Crusaders' house next week. Big time game for the big game. We turn live to Fox 12's Craig Burnback from Keegan's Bowl in Vancouver. And Craig, the long build is paying off for Hudson's Bay. The 10th ranked Eagles were 5 0 for the first time in two decades atop the perch in the 2 8 Greater St. Helens League with Washougal in their nest. Craig? Yeah, and Nick Washougal was well aware of Hudson's Bay's red hot 5 0 start. So they came into the Keegan's Bowl tonight on a mission to remind people that they are the defending league champs. Hudson Bay was hoping that home field would be an advantage tonight, but it was the Panthers who would pounce early on. Mercy Johnson is showing no mercy on this 16-yard scamper, and when he reaches pay dirt, Washugo led 14 to nothing. Did I say 14 to nothing? Well, Holden B says, not anymore. As he's going deep to Prescott Lenhart. And 47 yards later, it's 21 to nothing after one. Hudson Bay shows signs of light in the second when Akil Bowman squirts in to make it 21 to seven. But Holden B is gonna sting right back as he will not be denied on this 24-yard run and dive for the touchdown while Shugel's up 28 to seven at the break. Early third, B is gonna ice this one as he finds Sam Evers, who's seemingly running forever. He's in from 49 yards out, and with Shugel hands Hudson Bay their first loss of the season. 55-14 is your final. We had, you know, speeches in the locker room trying to get this all hyped up, you know, and it ended up working out. We got points on the board. We scored on almost every drive, or maybe every drive, I'm not really sure. So it was, uh, it was just a great game overall, both sides of the ball. Now, Nick, not only did Holden Bay account for five total uh, touchdowns on offense, he also dabbled a bit on defense where he recorded his first ever high school interception. What a night for the Panthers and their quarterback. Live from the Kiggins Bowl in Vancouver, Washington, Craig Burnback, Friday Night Lights. Craig always looks good in blue. Greaters in Helms League is for the greater good 3A 4A matchup 3 and 2 Evergreen from Doc Harris Stadium in Camas Papermakers had a four game win streak you can make it five on a pink out for homecoming second play of the game boy it came quick the quick strike over the middle Jake Davidson Chase McGee is he 50 yard score for the Papermakers second possession second play same combo same result Davidson McGee waved to my guy Paul Strunk and goodbye, 58 yards for the Camus score. Still first, third time Camus got the ball at midfield. Davidson spins around, slinks around, and threw the tackle for 20 yards and moved the chains to the 27. Two snaps later, the fake. The old Jack McDonald, 22-yard touchdown. The running clock would later be used. 49-21, league play in 4A, underway next Friday. Number two, Skyview at Camus. Craig will be there for a big game. The day game for the 3A GSHL double dip at McKinsey Stadium. Kelso with the early release to suit up and head down I-5. Heritage and the Highlanders with one win between them. Now there would be two. The Highlanders occupy both. Aiden Mintagni breaks a tackle on the far side of the field and busts another to snap loose. 29 yards, Kelso's first six of the night. Same quarter, same kid, same play, same result. The change goes 26. Aiden makes it 14 nothing. Now we see Heritage back to punt on their own 15, right in front of your TV screen. That's a safety in the back of the end zone. Highlanders can pass to Tucker Amrine, putting it up high in that clear blue sky. His guy there, Easton Marshall, with a man in his lap, 22 yards, 23 nothing, and those gold lids looking slick. Similar stuff, Lawrence Bostick goes boom stick. 22 yards, 51 nothing. Highlanders now await Mountain View Heritage will be the road team next Thursday with Evergreen. Return of the MAC in Vancouver, 3A Greater St. Helens League, number nine Mountain View at four and one, home with one and four Prairie in the nightcap at double dip from McKenzie. Cash Cook, Aiden Nicholson tied on a string, QB to wide out. This is the second of their two first quarter touchdown connections from 29 there. Concentration key, right? Cook to Nicholson again, the tip to himself. Move those sticks, my goodness. Later first, Thunder rolling with the rock on the ground. 
Jaden Brown, a little touchdown, three score lead before the second quarter began. It would just continue. The Drake, the stake, Porter Drake, looking like a snake, slithering around and through the Falcons, uncoiling 40 yards, 27 point halftime lead, 48 to zip MB. Thunder now go to Kelso. Prairie will fly to WF West. And we go live now to Fox 12's Chandler Watkins in Mount Angel. And Chandler, they live for Oktoberfest there and nights on the football field like this. Unbeaten Banks, 5 0 Kennedy, first place in that 3A Special District 1. Do you have your later hosing on? <laughs> well, darn, would you believe I left them at home? But. Hey, I'll bring them out next time because I will definitely want to see this matchup again. It was a roller coaster of a game tonight with the Braves scoring a touchdown, Trojans would score a touchdown back and forth. There was also a lot of flags. It was a rough game, but Banks had something to prove tonight and won the game by seven. Game time in Mount Angel. The Trojans hosted the Banks Braves for a tough matchup. It was another defensive struggle between the teams. It wouldn't be until the second quarter that the Braves would be the first to put six on the board by QB Cole Long. Trojans responded in the third quarter with a touchdown by 33. Braves 63 blocking the extra point. It's now 7-6 to six Braves. The Braves answered back on the next drive with a 15-yard touchdown by quarterback Cade Long. The extra point was good. Score is now 14-6. The Trojans made quick work with Isaiah Basarjan making the touchdown and two-point conversion. The game is now tied 14 to 14 and the crowd goes wild. <laughs> Amazing pass to Braves Park Little John gets them down the field to get another touchdown by Ashton Crossan. The Braves take the W 21 to 14. Got a lot of buddies that graduated last year. We just had a little bit of sour taste in our mouth just for them. And, you know, this one's for them. Absolutely for them. We need games like that, you know, hard-fought battles where it's just, you know, two great teams and, and uh, to kind of see where it ends up at the end. So it was, uh, you know, you learn a lot about yourself in, in games like this. And, you know, I like, obviously, that we came out on top and we made plays at the end. But, it's, you know, these are the kind of games that are fun. 6-0 Banks head to Florence, and now the Trojans head to Beaverton to face off against the Valley Catholic Valiants. In Mount Angel, Chandler Watkins, Friday Night Lights. Yeah, might see them both, too, in the semis about the championship yet again. 5-0, feeling mighty good. Fifth-ranked South Salem with Saxons on the road in Kaiser. McNary Celtics ready to chalk up a first victory. First play of the game, though, a home run. Eighth and Paul Matier. One of the best passers in the state because of dudes like this on his side. Esteban Mendez, grab a seat. 80-yard touchdown treat. That's how you open up on the road. South, not just about scoring, though. They're stingy on defense, too. Send that blitz. Then Paul Matier and Mendez have been waiting for a senior season like this for a while. Another completion right to Gino. And then Paul Matier, his second touchdown pass. This a 5'7 senior Griffin Hader. He's a lover of touchdowns. Then we see Tristan Gear put it into first for the score at 21 0. They just don't stop. Catch the night nominee here. Moonball, Eli Johnson pulls it in. Second quarter, second time across the field to Hater. 62 0, the end. South now gets back home Friday with Roseburg. McNary will go to West Salem. Speaking of, FNL Capital City. The band is out of the field. Sprague at West Salem, both carrying one and four records into week six. Caden Martriano is a junior quarterback who's now healthy and ready to lead the Titans back to the top. That's a keeper for a first down. Then the arm. Caden with some air to Jordan Sonatos. 23 yards to extend the edge, 33 to 7. Next drive, shoestring catch stuff. Damari Hall moves the chains their way to lead towards another score here. QB can play Houdini before the Deacon would light up. Deacon Schinkel. Slick play in that book. Highlight it. Keep it for next week. From there, from Caden to Luke Looney. Cartoony kind of score in front of my guy Gino again. 40-7 to seven to favor the Titans in the former black hole. West gets up to Kaiser now with McNary. Two of Sprague's last three will be away. The North Salem Vikings are next. You know, week six actually started a night ago. We'll roll back some of the great tape from Thursday Night Lights. Plus more from our two live crews on the scene. Craig with Hudson's Bay's cheer and Chandler on that small town vibe in Mount Angel. Plus, let's play two. Our high school spotlight hits the fall league softball diamond. 
after a lost summer for a Banks High freshman who is living, thriving to tell about it now. That's when Friday Night Lights returns right here on Fox 12. You're watching Friday Night Lights on Fox 12 Oregon, presented by Pacific Office Automation.